Hello and welcome on third tutorial in a series of Scandi PWA tutorials. In this session, we will learn how to style. We will learn approaches and best practices which you could use later on in your custom development. So let's get into it. The first thing we need to do is to create a style sheet. Let's start with a simple CSS style sheet. Let's go for style.css and let's import it here in our template file, style.css, I'll save it. It should work all right. Now in our style, we can start declaring the class names, which we would like to style because the styling by class is the best approach we currently know. Let's say we want a heading style and we want button style and the heading font size 20 and it will have uh, font family monospace. The button on the other side will have the appearance of none. The button will have the border of one pixel solid black and it will have a padding which I will define as 025 RAM to 1 RAM. This means 025 RAM from the top and 1 RAM from left and right. RAM is relative font size to the root element. In our case that would be an HTML and if it has like 12 pixels by default then 1 RAM is 12 pixels and 025 RAM is uh, 3 pixels. Another thing I would like to add is a background and I will set it to hot pink. Let's reload and of course nothing happens because we need to provide our class names. In order to do it we can head inside find the template, in our case this is render methods, and for our heading, which is currently a span, so let's just quickly change it to heading, for, for him let's say a class name to heading, and for the button let's set a class name to the button. And let's do the same for the button in our wrapper. Then we notice the application won't compile because it doesn't want us to use the class name. We will talk about why later on, but for now, let's disable this rule and for entire file. Great. So now we can see that our styles have changed. We have a beautiful buttons. We have the logic which is still working and what we should notice is that if we inspect the button styles, we can see that some unknown previously property WebKit appearance has appeared. So why is it so? Well, that's because the compilator automatically prefixes the properties with necessary vendor prefixes. If browser has a WebKit engine, it requires a WebKit prefix and it gets applied. Let's add a comment about this. Any property gets auto prefix. This means we can forget about writing them. We can use their international version and the compilator will automatically handle all of the exceptions. Great. Let's check if it still works. Yes, nothing broken. The next thing I would like to add is to define the colors a bit differently. So currently we are using this black, hot pink, direct color references, which is not great. I would uh, like some way to do it properly. And the recommended one is to use CSS variables, also known as CSS custom properties. Well, how to define them? Definition is um, normally done on the root element. So you declare a root element and you set the variable name, which starts with double dash. And let's say button color hot pink and button border color is black. So now let's use those variables and see what happens if I use it here and if I use this here we will get the same style as before. Nothing changed. But what we can do now to showcase the difference is define a new class name on our button component here and say that this class name 
is button wrapper and let's set its style to some different value. Button wrapper will update the color of a button. So if the button is located inside of the button wrapper, we want its background color to be different. So let's copy the color variable of a button and let's change it to green. Cool. And as you can see, it worked out. Inside of the button wrapper, the color of this button is green. Why is it so? This is so because the custom properties have inheritance. So they take the very top part and they go downwards looking up for redefinition of the variable and if they find one, then they use one closest to them. And as you can see here, the button tried to look button color on the root element, which said it is pink, but it uh, haven't used it. It took the closest one, the button color, which we redefined in our button wrapper. This is very useful when we want to change a hover. An example, if we do button hover inside, we can change a button color to some other variable, like an example button hover color. Let's define this variable up in our configuration and let's switch it to simple pink. Let's see how it works. Now if we hover a button, the style change, but we haven't re redefined the property. We just did it for variable. And this is unique and very useful because you do not change the logic. You are just changing the color and that's intended way. But what can we also change? If we look through this code, we can notice button here multiple times. The code doesn't look that great. How can we improve its readability? Well, we can switch from CSS to SCSS. We should also update the import here. After we do it, we will notice that nothing will be different here, but we will get a new option to provide this hover style right on the element by nesting the properties. And that's very useful. And this selector, this and symbol is actually a glue. So it allows us to glue a button with a hover, getting button hover together. And we can do the same for a wrapper here. If we want button wrapper to be different, we can just say glue button and a wrapper and it will still work. You can see no changes. This is how you can nest your class names and build the selectors using the pseudo classes, like in case with a hover or using the class concatenation. But this is still unorganized. We kind of don't have a system. Someone could go for dash here. Someone could name it with underscore. Someone would say it's a wrapper. We need some way to make a system out of it. When to name an element with an underscore, where it, with a dash, you have to decide on it beforehand. The solution we currently have is called BAM. So let's define the rules of it here. The BAM stands for block element modifier. Block written in a Pascal case. The Pascal case is very similar to camel case, but it also starts with a capital letter. In example, we can say the heading, the, the button, my element could be block. And when you declare it, you always declare it with a dot beforehand. So the declaration could look like dot my element and the styles inside. Another part of BAM is an element, also known as a LAM. And a LAM can uh, be written using a dash and then a Pascal case, but it always has a block in front of it. So if we're using our previous examples, the block could be heading strong or an example button icon or my element key. So those are the examples and they always use a dash before it. So the example declaration could look as follows heading strong and then styles inside. 
and in uh, scss we can shorten it to my element and then we can provide the glued class name inside and this is useful in case you have multiple elements inside of your block so you can write them in a single line knowing that they are on one level and every is uh, an element the last part of BAM is modifiers and modifiers known as mods are the state definition of an element or a block for example there could be heading is large button type icon modifier is separated with an underscore and is written in the camel case so is large you can also notice it could be one or two part one part means it's a boolean modifier and it should start with is if uh, it's a non-boolean modifier it should be split in two parts where first one define a type of this modif modification and the second one define a value of this modification like type icon or color red so the example declaration could look like heading is large or it can also look like type icon and you can see we're nesting one mod in another so you can see the mod can be applied to a heading and to an element and if written in the uh, css the mod could look like dot heading is large or dot heading is large dot heading key is huge now knowing this we need to rearrange our own button so the button by bam should start with a capital letter b so it's a button the hover stays for hover nothing changes the wrapper should now be separated with a dash and start with w so it's a wrapper now let's apply the same rules here we say it's a button wrapper we say that the button itself gets a large capital letter word and we want to change the heading as well so let's switch it to a block and let's see if it worked out and it seems like works as a charm but it's not really convenient to concatenate strings because sometimes you want multiple modifiers to be applied so let's use the helpers we have block allows you to define a block and if you can see it will generate us class here but there is an issue we defined a button but it was a block with an element wrapper so this is how it should go the button wrapper so you can see we have a block prop and element prop the block stands for a block in our styles the element stands for an element in our styles let's set some mods to our wrapper let's say is large equals true so in case wrapper is large let's change the button color to blue and let's see if it works yes button is blue and we can see button wrapper button wrapper is large nice you can see that the mods is an object let's format it a little bit so in case you are passing it as such it will be treated as boolean modifier in case you pass it as any string let's say a key and uh, normal then it will render as a non-boolean modifier it will say key normal just like we discussed in our style sheet example the thing we can do now is to go right to the top and disable the rule we applied and rework our styles to not use the class names if we go here we change this to block this to block and this to block as a result we now know that using class names is redundant because we can use the BAM props. But you ask me, how would I combine them together? How to mix those uh, mods and um, blocks and elements together? Like I had an option to write classes separated by space, but now how can I glue together two 
class names. Well, easy. The way to do it is called a mix. And the mix takes in an object and the subject again has the same keys as before. The block in our case is hello and an element world. Let's format this line. So we can see now if we inspect an element, we can find the button hello world. So it has a block and some block and element. If we want this third one in, you can provide a mix here again and do the same stuff again. So you can say another block is Alfred's. And if we inspect it, we now can see we have three class names, button, hello world, Alfred. Now we are pretty much covered with styles writing. In the next tutorial, we'll combine knowledge from this and previous tutorial to build our first real component in Scandi PWA style. Stay tuned and see you guys there.